I'm CJ Moses, CISO at AWS, and I'm joined today by Asaf Rappaport, CEO at Wiz. It's a cloud infrastructure and a security platform that helps customers operate secure cloud environments. Welcome, Asaf, and thanks for joining me today. You became a $100 million ARR company in less than 18 months uh, during a pandemic. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how you scaled and uh, were able to accomplish such a milestone in such a short period of time? So th definitely, actually, you know, it's $100 million, it's a great milestone, but I think that the one thing that we're most proud of is actually working with the, with the amazing customers and actually thought leaders yeah. of the world. So it's not only $100 million and, uh, in, in revenues in a way, but what we're looking is actually achieving and able to work with 30% of the Fortune 100 and the thought leaders of both the security world and also the cloud world. Uh, and as, as you mentioned, we started in March 2020. Yeah. It was COVID just started. Yes. Um, and, and basically, I, just to share, it, it was for, for me, it felt like, oh my God, this is probably the worst time to mm -hmm. start a startup. Like, you know, nobody was talking to us. It was very hard. Like, everybody were thinking, mm -hmm. did the world end? In a way, that's kind of the mindset. In, you know, in retrospective, looking at March 2020, probably if you wanted to found a company that is doing cloud security, yeah, yeah. probably that was the date uh, uh, to start. Mm -hmm. And again, I think the, the ability to scale and to get to the, you know, at that speed is definitely you need to focus on, you know, one of the, you know, probably the top priority, top problem mm -hmm. of, of security practitioners, which is cloud mm -hmm. security. Uh, and that, you know, focusing on that and able to be customer obsessed. And I know this oh, is yes, also, also one of the values yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, of Amazon and AWS, listening yeah. to, to the customers and working Work with backwards. the customers. I think these two things, major problem and be a good listener, that would enable us to, to achieve that. Yeah, I'm, I'm impressed from that standpoint because the customer obsession is what will drive adoption. And that's what we've seen at AWS. And obviously, uh, you've reproven it. Um, in you know in the uh, uh, cybersecurity space, uh, you know driven by um, you know a, a very quick run up, um, even even launching during the pandemic, um, the the challenges to actually just reach out to the customers that were in need of those capabilities had to be had to be uh, interesting. So, what are the biggest challenges in cloud security, and how is Wiz addressing them? So. I in a way, and, and I'm sure you're hearing it from, yeah, yeah. you know, most of the people yeah. that you were working and definitely in a, in a complex organization such as yeah, yeah. an amazing organization such an, as, as Amazon and AWS yeah, yeah. inside. So I, I think in a way cloud security and cloud was yeah. one of the biggest revolution for InfoSec teams. You know, the ability from moving from a centralized team that is yeah. controlling almost everything yeah, yeah. to a decentralized world where you, you know, you need to work not only a security team, you need to work as a you know, yeah. team in a way yeah. with the developers and DevOps. I think this changed a lot, you know, the kind of the processes and the mindset yeah. of the security teams. I think understanding that this is the main problem and actually yeah. not technology. Technology follows that yeah. in yeah. a way. I think understanding that it's people first, processes, and only then technology. Yeah. That's what we had in mind when, you know, yeah. starting with, uh, yeah. and that's kind of what we built. And actually, I'm curious from your, you know, yeah. you're seeing oh, yeah, yeah. lots of cybersecurity yeah. startups and, and, and even yeah. incumbents. What, what do you see is like the biggest differentiator of Wiz in the market? So I think from a differentiator, I think um, Wiz um, and the, the products slash service that you offer um, allows um, operations to occur, meaning that the operators of their environments and in in using it, um, for them to integrate security into what they do on a daily basis and this isn't necessarily something that only security teams are using. Just as you said earlier, the DevOps model includes the ability to, to identify things that need to be fixed, and it doesn't have to be the security team that does it. It's the, the operations team, if you will, the DevOps teams that are able to do so. And using, uh, using Wiz to do so, um, it's pretty ingenious, especially along the lines of, um, of the agentless model. Um, you know, makes it, uh, makes it rather streamlined. Uh, one of the things that we've been challenged by in the past is uh, deploying agents um, onto large scale platforms and then being able to, uh, to maintain uh, not only the security of them, but also uh, maintain the uh, ability to continue to work 
um, without having too much drag on the system itself. And the combination of DevOps environments being able to use the capability uh, because it's rather streamlined. That's a nice thing is, is that it just works, and that's that's a that's a big plus. Um, and then also not having uh, a need for an agent on every last box to do it. In the case of when you're looking at uh, mergers and acquisitions, that becomes very key. There's not a lot of companies out there that want to add another agent to their box from a company that may be buying them or may not. Um, so having the ability to turn around and do that. So I think there's a lot of differentiation that I've seen um, from from, from Wiz, uh, and uh, I think that's uh, that differentiation, I think, goes back to some of our previous discussions in regards to customer obsession, which has also driven a, a huge uh, ARR, uh, you know, spike in 18 months, which is pretty, pretty impressive anyway. Curi actually, yeah, yeah. Curi curious, you know, you, you saw yeah. AWS when it was like a sm very small yeah. project and to the scale that it is today and to, to, the, to, to becoming the market leader yeah, yeah. In, the in, in the cloud space. Curious what kind of, Tips can you give us oh, as, yes. like in the beginning oh, of our journey? <laughs> so, so yes, I, I joined AWS almost 15 years ago now. Um, and when I joined, uh, there were five services. Um, I think I was in the neighborhood of about the 300th, it was like 320th or thereabouts, um, AWS employee. Um, today, across all of Amazon, I'm within the last 0.25% <laughs> of of Amazonians that are still there. So it's one of those things that in 15 years, we've hired a lot of people. Um, so uh, the changes or the things that we saw um, and actually looking at some of, some of what Wiz has done, it's almost like Groundhog's Day because I look at the growth based upon the customer focus, um, the growth in capability um, actually equates to the growth in customers um, because you're focused on the customers, you see the challenges that they're having and then turn around and use the challenges, the working backwards from the customer, which is kind of our model as well, um, to uh, providing, filling those gaps and making sure that in, in this case, that uh, you're maintaining their security. So, um, you know, tips, I think you're onto something. <laughs> um, we spent a lot of years in, in talent uh, coming up with our leadership principles um, and the things that we do. Part of that cult company culture is working, being customer obsessed and working backwards from customers. And I think that uh, if you continue to kind of follow that model, I think you're onto something. Um, so by way of tips, um, our leadership principles are all available on, on the internet, Google away, um, and uh, they, they've worked well for us. Um, and uh, it seems like even without, uh, without us giving you the tips, you found some of them on your own. So, uh, so, so good on you and the team at WISP. I mean, I'm curious to hear your perspective. What are the top trends in cybersecurity um, that you're seeing right now based upon your discussions with CISOs? Actually, it's super interesting time. I think that what we're seeing, I think also because of the downturn and the economy. Absolutely. That impact That's the number that. one on the list these days is that downturn um, in how to deal with it in my in my discussions with Cisco, yeah. that's for sure. So, so, so definitely, and definitely in cloud security, what we're seeing is a lot of thinking about consolidation and efficiency. Absolutely. That's kind of the main theme. And I think that in, in cloud security, Consolidation is not only, oh, it's easier to work with one vendor. It feels like that's a must. You cannot be efficient if you're having multiple products, multiple, multiple technologies mm -hmm. that are actually not connected. You have a solution for containers and a different yeah, solution yeah. for serverless and a different solution for vulnerabilities. You need one solution, consolidate, and only then you can be actually efficient and effective with your cloud security program. That, absolutely, and that's, that was going to be my point, and you summed it up very nicely there, is efficiency can't be at the cost of the effectiveness um, because the threats actually during an economic downturn actually turn up because uh, people still want money. And uh, um, obviously during economic downturns, it becomes even more difficult. So those, those, uh, uh, those attack vectors and th those wishing to, uh, to do us harm, whether uh, monetarily motivated will, uh, or those that are monetarily motivated will be the ones that, uh, that we see upticks in the, yep. the security space. So you don't want to decrease your security in any way, um, but at the same time, um, you know, obviously everybody's got to tighten the belt just a little bit um, at a minimum. So that's that's what I've seen, and a lot of the discussions we have uh, very CISO uh, advisory councils and different meetings that we have with lots of CISOs. That was the number one in the last month or so. Um, that's been the number one um, thing in the consolidation. Right on the the heels of that is is number two. So it's kind of the we're tightening, tightening belts and then consolidation. So uh, 
Um, you know, that, that, those are the trends more recently. I think uh, previous to this, the discussion of ransomware always was there yeah. and will never end. Um, but uh, a lot of the discussions I have in that space, you know, ransomware was the hot buzzword for a long time um, and obviously a true threat. But uh, looking at the environments that we were dealing with um, is that ransomware doesn't find its way onto your systems on its own. Uh, traditionally, it's making sure your stuff is patched to begin with, that you have the right security in place. Ransomware is just one of the, you know, the packages that can be delivered uh, via those vulnerabilities that you already have um, and that you can patch you know, um, or other mitigations you know, from phishing or otherwise. Um, and that's one of the things, going back to what you were saying, is when you have an integrated capability to look across to all of the different pieces and parts, not uh, multiple vendors that you have to, to deal with, across you know, the totality of your visibility, um, I think that's, uh, that's important. And I think that's likely uh, some of the success that you've seen in that, in that realm. Can you tell us a little bit about how you're working with AWS and your go-to-market strategy? Yeah, def definitely. You know, I, I think that when we, as a startup, when you choose you know, the cloud provider you want to work yeah, with, yeah. you're basically, you're starting with an R&D, so you're looking for the best technology. We were looking for the best technology, but we also want the best partner. And the importance yeah. of, of partnership, and also in the go-to-market, is, is kind of the ability. And, and, mm -hmm. and it's, for, for us, it's mind-blowing. Think about it, startup that startup in, started in Tel Aviv, in Israel, very far from, yeah. from, from Seattle, in a Absolutely. way. Absolutely. And the ability to work from the beginning, from the get-go, you know, almost co-develop. Yeah, For example, yeah. Moran, our backend yeah. engineer working directly with Karthik in Seattle, basically for our mutual customers to yeah, provide yeah. better security for them. That's, that was mind blowing from the get go. Yeah. And it didn't end up there because that's kind of the co-development that we were able to, to start with as a yeah, partner yeah. With, with Amazon. But also if we're looking at the, at the go-to market and the product market fit, yeah, absolutely. working with your team you know, getting kind of the, the insights. Yeah, yeah. What, what is the top of mind from the very beginning to understand from, from mm -hmm. your team, what is the top of mind for the AWS customers yeah, yeah. to guide us where we should go, where, where we should we focus? Yeah. If you think about it, this is super, super critical. Defin definitely in mm -hmm. downturns and, and recession oh, yeah, yeah. that you, you, you want to focus, you cannot allow you, you know, to, to yeah, yeah. defocus yourself. So using AWS not as a great technology, but as a great partner to guide you and to work together to develop the best solution for the customer, that was mind blowing for us. Yeah, and I, I uh, wanna thank you for the partnership because that's been one of the things that um, we've always found in our, you know, in customers or vendors that we work with is we want a partnership. Um, we don't want to just engage in a, we're buying or selling. Um, it needs to be a partnership. Um, in order to ensure that we're, we're both getting the best out of, out of each other's capabilities. And that's one of the things that um, at AWS, you can think, oh, well, it's a huge company now, and the mentality is, oh, we know, we know better than any. Quite honestly, um, we, we remain very humble, and uh, working with talent like, like you have helps us stay that way because we realize that there's new and better ways to do every, everything that we're doing, um, and we want to continually improve. Um, and keeping that new startup type of mentality. Yep. When I started at AWS, literally, um, we dragged beanbag chairs into the back corner of a data center. Um, so we were a startup within Amazon um, and uh, had to operate uh, very similar to how startups, I don't know if you had to drag beanbag chairs into the office, but nonetheless, <laughs> I'm sure it was a laptop, maybe in a Starbucks or something like that. Um, but nonetheless, it's uh, still that mentality, but being customer focused and subsequently, uh, you know, uh, delivering on those things that you tell customers you're you're going to do based upon their feedback, I think goes goes a really long way. This is definitely something that we are feeling as as a startup, and I'm yeah. sure you know AWS was super significant for getting to our achievement at you know from zero yeah, to 100, yeah, yeah. and I'm sure that you know from 100 to billion, you're going to still yeah, be yeah. super significant for us in the partnership. And thank you for the partnership. No, and, and, and thank you for, for the partnership as well. And obviously, as we go forward, we're looking forward to, to the new goals and achievements that, that Wiz, Wiz has, but most importantly, uh, that you maintain that customer obsession and focus yeah. um, as you go forward. Definitely. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.